This is Dennis McMahon, and welcome to Positively Vermont. My special guest today is Anson Tebbets, the Secretary of the Vermont Agency of Agriculture, Food, and Markets. And we have a very interesting program in store for all of you about Secretary Tebbets and the work uh, the Vermont Agency is doing now, uh, post-pandemic and through the crisis and all of those things that should be of great interest. Welcome, Mr. Secretary. Well, thank you, Dennis. It's great to be with you again and also great to be with all your viewers. Great. Well, first of all, would you just tell us a little bit about yourself uh, and your role as Secretary of Agriculture, Food, and Markets? A little bit of personal information and, and uh, when you started and what you've been doing. Well, thank you. Um, well, I grew up on a, um, on a dairy farm in the town of Cabot, um, traditional dairy farm. We had uh, milking cows. We did a little bit of maple sugaring. At one point, we had uh, sheep as well. Um, and from there, um, you know, I went to, I graduated from Cabot High School uh, in the 80s. And, and went on to school in Boston. And uh, actually I, I have a degree in something, something in your field, I was in communications. So I worked in, uh, I worked in radio and I worked in television along the way. I worked at uh, radio station WDEV in Waterbury, it was my first uh, paying job outside of college. And then from there, I, I, I dipped my toe into uh, television. So I was a television reporter. And eventually ended up as um, the news director at uh, WCX TV uh, on Joy Drive there in in, uh, in Burlington. And then about uh, I guess it's going to been going on six years ago. Governor Scott um, asked me to come aboard and be his uh, Secretary of Agriculture, Food, and Markets. So that's what I've been doing for the last uh, I guess five plus years, going on six years now. That's great. Well, give us an idea of of the scope of the agency, how how big it is. And and uh, what it does, and also the, the, the role of Vermont uh, it, it, nationwide and worldwide in, in agriculture? Well, the, uh, the scope is quite, wi quite wide. Um, you can actually think about it as uh, agriculture is going to touch you at just about everything you do every day. So, for example, um, we, have, uh, we regulate uh, gas pumps. It's something that folks may not know, but if you next time you're pumping up uh, at the pumps and you're putting gas in your in your car, uh, look to the gas pump and you'll see a sticker on it. And it likely will be inspected by the Agency of Agriculture, Food and Markets. So we, we work in weights and measures. If you go into a, a supermarket and we wanna make sure you get accurate uh, pricing. So we may look at the pricing to make sure the pricing in the aisle is consistent with the pricing at the checkout counter. Uh, deli counters, we may be in there from propane to gas, we do that. We also are, um, have regulations about animal, um, animal and food safety. So we have a, a division that works on consumer assurance and that, that may be inspecting the milk dairy plants. They may be inspecting on-farm dairies. Uh, we do meat inspections. So we'll be in the meat plants, we'll be doing that. We also have an entomology department looking at uh, bugs. So we have a number of things we're keeping our eye on about invasive species. We also look at economic development. So we're, we're helping um, farms and businesses uh, try to make sure that they're uh, profitable and, and economically viable. So we have support for that. And we have a, a division that looks at uh, water quality, uh, making sure that um, we're protecting the waters of Vermont. So we have a number of people that, whether they be engineers or inspectors, working with our farms to make sure they're complying and supporting the uh, um, water quality is a loss of the state of Vermont. So it's really quite uh, wide ranging uh, what we all do. And we have about 100 and 135 employees full time uh, stationed uh, across the state of Vermont in all sections of Vermont, many of them working in the field. So they may not physically be in an office, but they're, uh, they're everywhere. So that's just an overview of some of the things we do, Dennis. Great. Well, this uh, show is not only uh, viewed locally, but it gets around the world, in fact, uh, to the many contacts uh, I have in Europe. Uh, I'd just like you to describe the, the picture of, of Vermont in terms of agricultural resources, uh, trade, and what we're known for, or perhaps uh, locally uh, in the United States and in Canada and around the world. 
Well, probably our, our biggest uh, commodity is dairy, uh, whether that be in milk, cheese, butter, yogurt, you know, uh, about um, about uh, 60 to 70 percent of our revenues in agriculture are related to dairy. So that may be a, a dairy farm that's just uh, producing milk and just selling to two of our major co-ops, one being Agamark and Cabot with the Cabot brand, or one may be DFA St. Albans. And that milk may go across the United States. It may go to the region. So I would say dairy is probably our, our, our principal um, uh, commodity. We also have tremendous influence across the United States in maple. Uh, most of the maple, um, about half of the maple produced in the United States is coming directly from the Green Mountains. So half of the crop of the United States, we're the number one producer of pure Vermont maple syrup in the United States. And that uh, may go across the country, may go across the world. We also have folks that are doing uh, tremendous things in fruits and vegetables, whether they be apple orchards, whether they be supplying some of our institutions with fresh vegetables. Uh, we have that. And then we have a lot of value added um, ag based companies, whether they be, uh, you know, specialty foods, uh, whether it be jams and preserves that are relying on, um, you know, local um, products to produce another uh, product. And we have a, a robust um, uh, wine, beer and spirits um, um, uh, industry in Vermont. And some of those uh, products are made from uh, Vermont agriculture products. So it's really wide ranging uh, what we do, everything from honey to maple to, mer to dairy to cheese uh, to apples. It's all uh, wide ranging across uh, the state of Vermont. Well, we, the last time we spoke, I believe, was at the height of the pandemic or the beginning of the pandemic. What challenges did that pose to you and your agency? And, and how has Vermont agriculture coped or is coping with right now? Well, clearly, uh, Dennis, there was a uh, there was a disruption um, early on in the pandemic. Uh, we saw a tremendous crash in some of the um, some of the markets. Um, take dairy, for example. Many of our cheesemakers uh, were in, their markets were in restaurants. Uh, they might have been in institutions, and those uh, were closed for a considerable amount of time. So they had to decide um, what they were going to do to to pay their bills. So many of them switched to going um, online. Uh, so e-commerce became much more of a focus and continues to be a big focus. So a tremendous amount of cheese right now is being shipped across uh, the United States in the mail uh, to uh, various folks directly to the consumer. Uh, some of the markets have come back. Uh, you know, our restaurants uh, have opened up again, and some of our cheese shops, of course, have opened up again. So those markets remain there. But I would say e-commerce was a big change. Um, also, um, there was a tremendous amount of, uh, of milk on the market, which couldn't reach everywhere. So uh, that was a disruption for our dairy farmers. Uh, recently, the price of milk paid to farmers has been um, has been good. It's, uh, historically, it's been some of the highest prices they've been paid on the conventional side, but it's being offset by some of the inflationary problems we've had over the last few months, particularly uh, the price of fuel um, to run tractors is extremely high. The transportation that's involved in moving product to, uh, to the region has been very high. The cost of grain to feed our animals is very high. And also if those that are using fertilizer, those have been very high. So everything from the pandemic uh, to the war in uh, Ukraine have impacted several things for agriculture across the region. So it's, uh, it depends where you're standing. Uh, we did have a lot of folks uh, return to um, shopping at farm stands and farmers markets and thinking about um, maybe more of a regional and a local approach uh, to their buying habits. Uh, so that's been on the on the positive side. So it, I guess it, it's hard to it, it's hard to say uh, where it all landed, but it's been some positives in some aspects, uh, but some negatives in other areas. So depending on where you're standing. Well, this being harvest time coming up, uh, how would this harvest time compare to last year and the year before? And anything other comparisons you could make? Well, as we as we speak here in uh, mid September, um, the apple harvest seems to be uh, very strong. 
I'm hearing good reports. Um, you know, there's nothing better than going to a pick your own operation for a family event. And we have a number of orchards that are doing that. They're also producing value added products like uh, cider and also pies and so forth. So those seem to be going well. It's been a um, it's been a challenging summer in some aspects because of the weather conditions for a lot of our farmers. It has been dry in some reason, regions, uh, particularly, um, you know, uh, the farther south you go, we're hearing more, more folks in maybe the Wyndham, Bennington counties have had more challenges of being dry, particularly Addison County, which is a very intensive agriculture county. So it's, um, and some of that's impacted some of the forage for animals. Um, and other places have had just enough rain. So I guess, again, it's one of those things where you're standing. Uh, but I think for the most part, it's been a challenging summer because of its, uh, the, uh, it's been dry. And the rain that we did, that we have received has come at a very a strong, you know, quick downpours. And we haven't had those really uh, soaking rains that are really valuable to replenish the, uh, the crops and the gardens and so forth. Maybe we can discuss some of these initiatives that have been going on uh, for this Vermont Future of Agriculture uh, Commission Action Plan. What is that about? How is well, it? The yeah, so the, uh, the Governor Scott, um, this, is, this comes out of the pandemic, and we've been talking about the pandemic. Uh, following the pandemic, it was really noticed by a lot of, of folks, including the governor and, and us at the agency and the Agency of Commerce and Community Development. Um, that um, agriculture really became the focus when people were shopping and realizing, um, you know, agriculture is pretty darn important because it's feeding us. So uh, the governor charged us with taking a look at uh, various things to support agriculture. Um, one thing that we found is we need to work on, uh, you know, distribution, processing, our infrastructure of our agriculture is very, very important. You know, we have a small population in Vermont, about 660,000 folks. So, um, you know, we, we need to we need to send a lot of our uh, a lot of our agriculture products outside our region to bigger markets, for example, Boston, New York, Washington, Philadelphia. But to do that, you need a system in place where it's easy to distribute those products. So so one of the things that we looked at is infrastructure. So one of the priorities of that was to make sure that we made investments in storage, um, in transportation, um, all those things that make it more affordable for folks to get agriculture products throughout the region. So that was one of those um, um, recommendations that we made through the, uh, through the Governor's Commission on the Future of Agriculture. Let me ask you about the, the agency's funding uh, to support the farm, uh, food, and forest businesses. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, we have, um, let's, let's start with an example. We have the uh, Working Lands Enterprise Fund and the Working Lands Enterprise Fund has been fortunate over the last uh, year or so to have about $5 million that helps support uh, uh, farming, whether it be a, a sugar operation, maybe it be a vegetable operation, maybe it's a dairy operation. And that can, that can also work on infrastructure. So if they needed that, really critical piece of equipment. Take a slaughterhouse, for example. Uh, the equipment in slaughterhouses is very, very expensive, but there might be a, a saw, there might be some packaging that would really benefit uh, that industry. So the Working Lands Enterprise um, Fund can give folks a, a grant to make that purchase. It's a competitive grant. Uh, there's an application, there's a process to go through that in an independent board. Um, that's managed by the Agency of Agriculture, Food and Markets, works on those grants. That's one example. We also recently, uh, because of this disruption uh, in the dairy industry, uh, Vermont is host to the Northeast Dairy Business Innovation Center. Uh, and we recently received a, a infusion of uh, money to help with the um, dairy industry in Vermont. We received about $19 million dollars to work within Vermont and the region to support dairy farmers. Uh, they may be looking at uh, everything from on-farm practices uh, to maybe processing. Uh, we have uh, some dollars that are gonna be available for our cheesemakers or our dairy processors to make uh, considerable infrastructure improvements. We're also looking at distributing some dollars to the on-farm 
uh, businesses. So if that dairy farmer needs improvement in the milk house, maybe needs a new bulk tank, more storage, um, better efficiency uh, with that, uh, we're going to have a granting program for that. So it's, it's wide ranging um, what we have for programs. We actually, if folks wanted to go to our, our webpage, there's a calendar of events there. And on that calendar, it has the funding opportunities and it lists the, uh, all the programs that we have that may benefit agriculture. It's called the annual calendar of funding opportunities. And it's uh, everything is available year round um, for uh, financial assistance for our agriculture community. That's great. Let's talk about, about an initiative that is fairly recent and uh, uh, seems to have uh, obtained a lot of interest, and that's the uh, importance, value, and concepts of agritourism. Tell us about that. Yeah, we, we uh, Vermont recently uh, hosted an international conference on agritourism. Uh, this was uh, organized uh, by the University of Vermont Extension Service. And we were partners in helping to support that conference. So we had, I would say, about um, 50 different countries participating on this in the Burlington region. And more than 500 participants uh, took part in this three-day conference that was hosted by uh, Vermont. The last time they had it a couple of years ago was in Italy. And this is taking a look at um, some folks that may want to bring folks to their farm or their business and maybe it's a farm stay. So maybe you want to spend a couple of days on the farm. You've got a place to, to sleep there, but they learn um, hands-on what it's like um, to um, run a dairy operation. For example, we have one in, in Rochester, Vermont. It's an agritourism operation. It's a working dairy farm. Uh, they have a place where folks can stay. They also can get a nice breakfast uh, every morning but they also can learn exactly what it takes to run a, a dairy operation in Vermont. So I think there's been a trend to see if that's uh, another revenue source for some of our agriculture enterprises. And um, I think there's potential growth there um, if, the, if we can support more of those across the state of Vermont to bring more people looking for authentic experiences. And I think that has been the trend across the nation, people looking for real experiences that are meaningful. They can see how the land is taken care of. They can see how the water is taken care of and they can see how the animals are taken care of. And then they can learn more about what it really takes to produce something uh, from a farm. That's great. And uh, we're, we're uh, recording now on September the 12th. And uh, what uh, other projects uh, are, is the uh, Agency of Agriculture, Food and Markets looking into or planning for the rest of the year? You know. Uh, Winter is going to be coming, and, and season, holidays, pumpkins, and all that stuff. Tell us a little yeah. bit about what, what the next few months are going to look like. Well, fall is, is again, a very uh, important month uh, for agriculture. Um, we're going to be supporting many um, maple initiatives uh, called Maple 100. Um, you know, we think about maple when maple is produced in, uh, you know, February, March, early April. But we're also uh, introducing maple to folks that may be visiting Vermont um, during the foliage season. So I think it's important that we focus on maple being a year round product. Um, so there's places to visit and see uh, maple operations, although they may not be producing uh, maple at that time. There's still a lot to learn. And it's all focused on our foliage season. Of course, the, the sugar make, maple is so vital uh, to our fall uh, tourism season. We'll be talking about um, uh, one big fair that's uh, coming up uh, in, uh, uh, from September uh, you know, 16th for 17 days after that. And that's the Big E in West Springfield, uh, Massachusetts. Vermont uh, has a building down there where a number of our companies um, sell uh, their products and give those visitors to the Big E a very authentic experience when they uh, come into that building, whether they want to see the cheese, uh, whether they get a beverage, whether they see some of the arts and crafts that uh, Vermonters uh, are so good at doing. Um, so they'll have an opportunity for that as well. And of course, um, anytime folks can get out and visit uh, a pick your own operation, uh, we have some incredible pick your own operations, whether they be at the apple orchard 
whether it be, uh, you know, grabbing a pumpkin somewhere. So everyone's kind of cherishing that really important time for uh, the fall before we head into uh, to winter, uh, which is another another season. But we have a little bit of law there during stick season that we uh, catch up on things before we head into the winter season. That's great. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, one of the uh, uh, things that the, our legislature, of course, uh, concluded its session. Uh, and what, what types of initiatives uh, uh, is the agency interested in, uh, in the state, and I guess now the federal level, or what initiatives uh, have been passed as a result of interest by the, uh, by the uh, agency uh, this past session? And the new session will be coming in January. Let, let, let us uh, get a little bit of a legislative outlook. Yeah, so I think, um, you know, one thing is to keep our eye on, um, on the budget. Um, you know, as we speak in September, um, our revenues can, can, are still pretty strong, um, and the revenue forecasts continue to run ahead of schedule. And, um, and that has a lot to do with, I think, more people are visiting Vermont. More people have come to Vermont and purchased homes uh, post-pandemic. We've seen a population increase in Vermont for the first time in a very, very long time. So that's that's helping our economy in, in, in some aspects. So we'll be looking at uh, more uh, initiatives that grow our economy, you know, make it more affordable. Um, and of course, we're always keeping our eye on um, the less vulnerable. So we have to make sure that um, people are being fed and they have uh, those folks that need assistance there. We'll be looking at those um, particular projects. And again, we're gonna to continue to use those federal dollars that have come to Vermont uh, to focus on projects that are long-term, so have a lasting impact, um, not just in the year 2022, but are gonna be with us for a long time. And again, that speaks to working on our infrastructure, making sure that our, our farms have the proper equipment to be more efficient, more affordable, so they can get those products uh, to the public in a way that's affordable. And it may be, you know, water, sewer, we'll be investing in those. We'll be making sure that we continue to invest in a broadband and cell service, which is so important to our rural economy. Uh, we need those uh, things uh, ticking so we can possibly move products uh, through e-commerce if we want. We can communicate together. So all those things will be uh, priorities as we continue to try to grow the economy, make it more affordable, and, and take care of the less vulnerable. Excellent. A lot of people are, will be watching this uh, here and in other, other parts of the country, uh, and, and particularly with uh, the upcoming months and issues you, you mentioned, this whole issue of food security and food safety. Uh, what can people do? How can people get more involved in the agriculture and, and food uh, scene in Vermont uh, from your perspective? Well, I think it's important that we all... Um you know, uh, take a pause and, and learn before, you know, maybe we react. Um, you know, if you have the opportunity to buy something locally from a farmer, maybe you're shopping in a, in a, a supermarket, you see uh, there's a Vermont product there. If you could purchase that, if you're, you have the means to do that, that would be fantastic. If you can visit, uh, you know, farm stands, uh, maybe you want to purchase some products uh, directly uh, from that company online to do that. Um, you know, send gifts to your friends, uh, send Vermont products through the mail for them. And also uh, get to know your neighbors, get to know uh, what it's like to farm. Uh, sometimes it's not as, you know, it's, it can be a little gritty, can be a little, little tough. Um, you know, uh, farming is, is, you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, so some vehicles may, you know, move at uh, odd hours, uh, not the nine to five schedule that a lot of us are used to. And I think uh, um, education is important and anything you can do, um, whether it be in school, uh, whether it be in your community, uh, to pay attention to your to your farmer, support them in any way you can. Um, so they're there uh, to keep our uh, land open and in production. And of course, at the end of the day, what they're doing is they're feeding us all. That reminded me of just one more thing, the idea of education and career in mm -hmm. farm. Uh, what, if anything, is being done to interest young people and students, college students, even high school students in careers in agriculture? Yeah, there's, there's tremendous opportunity um, now for, for folks. Um, you know, we need, um, we need young minds, young workers, 
And that may be, um, you know, working on a dairy farm and you're in charge, you're the mechanic on a dairy farm um, to keep that equipment rolling so the crops can be harvested, the milking equipment keeps going. So there's opportunities for that. So our, our regional technical centers are valuable with that. Uh, we have uh, some FFA, Future Farmers of America chapters uh, throughout Vermont that are important. Uh, we have a couple of colleges, uh, one in Randolph, um, uh, formerly VTC, has an agriculture school that's adapting and changing. We also have the University of Vermont in our backyard, uh, a working farm there. A number of folks working agriculture at the School of Agriculture there as well. We have Sterling College up in Crassbury as well, uh, a smaller institution, but working on various aspects of agriculture that are important. So there's tremendous opportunity, whether it be, um, you know, growing a school garden in elementary school, farm to school programs are very important to learning about where your food comes from, how to grow it. And then through high school and right up through college, there's a number of opportunities for folks to really be involved in agriculture. So it remains viable for the future. Well, that's great. Well, thank you very much. And I, I want to have you back a lot sooner, uh, maybe in the next season, uh, to explain some more things that of interest uh, and all your great work. I want to commend you and your uh, employees and your agency for just the, the pivotal role that you have been playing in, in the success and, and the quality of life. In well, thank, thank you. Thank you, Dan. It's great to chat with you and wishing you and all of your viewers uh, best of luck. Thank you. Uh, this is Dennis McMahon. My guest has been Anson Tebitz, the secretary of the Vermont Agency of Agriculture, Food, and Markets, speaking with us here on Positively Vermont. Thank you for watching.